If you've been following my work, you know that for me, Route 66 is a special place. The nostalgic appeal combined with the empty streets and wide open spaces keeps calling me back. My last trip out to New Mexico put a stamp on the final states that I'd previously been missing, and I've realized that the route is so much more diverse than I originally expected three years ago when I first stepped on the famous road in Winslow, Arizona. So I'm currently over in England and a little limited with gear. I do have this Yashica Mat 124G that I'm gonna go do a shoot with tomorrow. But I have really been wanting to make a video about some of my favorite places on Route 66 for photography now that I've completed the entire thing from Chicago to California. And what's interesting is there's some places that I had high expectations for that really didn't live up to that. Uh, but then there were other places that kind of came out of nowhere uh, that caught me off guard and that I really enjoyed. And I really think that everyone should try and experience some part of Route 66 at some point, just because uh, a lot of these places are slowly disappearing. First up is one of the most well-known and also one of the most recent places that I visited, Tucumcari in New Mexico, about an hour from the Texas border. Arguably one of the most iconic and well-known towns on the route, the Mother Road runs right through the heart of Tucumcari, which is home to an endless amount of nostalgic buildings and signs from the past. So I want to start with this town just because on my recent trip out to Route 66, Tucumcari is where I set up shop and made my home base for about four days. And not only is the town itself full of really interesting old signs and buildings, but if you go either direction on the interstate, uh, there's also a lot of really cool smaller towns as well, uh, full of really interesting stuff to photograph. So. Like I said, I spent about four days in Tucumcari and I never really got tired at all of shooting the surroundings and I feel like I could have spent a lot longer there. So as mentioned, Tucumcari is definitely more than just the main street. If you turn down any side road in the town, you're bound to find something interesting. And for me, I spent the first day just going up and down the main street and photographing some of the older buildings. And then on the second day, kind of on a whim, uh, I turned down one of the side roads and I ended up finding a whole other part of town that I didn't even know existed, which was really interesting. And then also, uh, if you head out Railroad Ave, I believe it's called, and you go to the western edge of town where it meets the interstate, uh, there's this area where there's a truck stop and a gas station, uh, an old restaurant, some hotels, uh, just an area that really doesn't get visited, but all these places are abandoned and it's kind of almost uh, surreal in a way. So just really, really fascinating place to explore. Second on the list is really where it all started for me. That is the towns of Winslow and Holbrook in Arizona. So these two towns were my first introduction to the route and they're really what kind of kicked off my fascination with this place. And Winslow and Holbrook are about 30 minutes apart, I believe, just off the interstate uh, and they're full of really, really interesting sites. So if you wanna make a day trip, it's the perfect two towns to go visit because they're nice and close. So Holbrook is home to probably one of the most iconic places on the route, and that is the Wigwam Motel. And even though it's been really well documented in the past, it's still just a super fun place to explore. And there's a ton of visual opportunities for images with the owner's vintage cars parked out front of all of the concrete teepees. And then if you walk any direction from the motel, even just across the street, uh, there's a ton of iconic old signs and buildings. So Holbrook itself is a fun one you could spend a day at easily. As for the town of Winslow, as I mentioned, it's about 30 minutes up the highway going west. And it's also a town that's full of quirky old signs and buildings, uh, both in the town itself and then also on the outskirts. Uh, I've created probably a number of my favorite images from my current portfolio uh, in the town of Winslow, including the laundromat image and then also including the painted desert image. Heading back in the other direction, the next two towns are probably my favorite along the route. And they're ones that I just photographed on my last trip out there. And that is the towns of Glen Rio and San John. 
so Glen Rio is a ghost town uh, right on the border of New Mexico and Texas, and the border actually runs right through the middle of the town itself. And this is one of the areas that I probably spent most of my time at on my last trip out there. And there's not a ton in the town itself, but what is there is really cool. So there's an old motel with a really awesome sign, a uh, couple other interesting buildings, and then there's also what looks like a gas station or service station uh, with an old car out front. And this section of Route 66 is actually an old gravel road uh, just off of the interstate. Uh, and it's really quiet out there, so it's kind of a nice place to spend a couple hours or half a day, whatever you want. Uh, not a lot of traffic goes through there. And then on top of that, when you do get off the interstate, before you pass back over it to get to Glen Rio, uh, there's a really cool old service station and gas station uh, that I photographed on my last vlog that I had up. And uh, I created a couple of my favorite images from the trip at that location. So leaving Glen Rio, just up the interstate by about 20 minutes, going west is the town of San John, which is in New Mexico. So hopping off the highway, you can drive the route right through the entire town of San John, and it has some really interesting old buildings uh, to photograph, but probably my favorite is by the western edge of town. There's this old motel, uh, and it just has this old car parked out front on the lawn, and then a couple other older buildings. And the scene itself uh, almost looks like someone staged it and put it there. It's just, in my opinion, almost perfect. So jumping over to California, next up is probably the most iconic spot on the route, and that is the town of Amboy, which is home to Roy's Cafe. So this is obviously a really well-known spot, uh, but I wanna mention it anyways, just because uh, not only is the town of Amboy and Roy's Cafe uh, a really fascinating place to photograph, but if you drive either direction on the route from there, there's also a couple other spots that are definitely worth checking out. Roy's Cafe is probably the most photographed icon on the route. The sign itself, towering above the small white motel buildings, is pretty much a perfect scene. So right across a road from the cafe uh, are a number of other really interesting buildings. There's an old church, there's what looks like an old home, a couple other empty buildings, and then beside the cafe is the old Amboy School, although it is gated off, but it still uh, has some potential to photograph. The section of Route 66 that Amboy is on is anywhere from a half an hour to an hour off of the interstate, just depending on which route you take. And that whole section of the route from Ludlow on the west end to Essex on the east end, is definitely worth checking out. Although, just a heads up, every time I've been out there, uh, at least one portion of it has been closed off. My recommendations would be to check out Amboy and then head east towards Chambliss where you'll come across the Roadrunner Motel with its amazing sign, and then head back all the way to the interstate, stopping in Ludlow along the way. So in Ludlow, there's an old service station, there's an old home, uh, an old garage, and then a few other buildings. Uh, so it's definitely a worthwhile place to spend a couple hours and shoot some photos before you get back on the interstate. So to wrap this up, I'm just gonna talk quickly about a couple of uh, what I would say are honorable mentions. And these are places that uh, are really cool to check out, but maybe don't have as much there to see as the places I've already listed. So first up is the town of Yermo. And this isn't technically part of Route 66, but it's about 15 minutes north uh, up towards Interstate 15. So it's definitely worth checking out if you're in the area. Uh, if you're in the town of Yermo and then you head uh, east out of town toward the interstate. Uh, once you start getting out of the town itself, there's a couple of cool old buildings, including a garage with a really neat old sign and then an old gas station as well. Next up is the Bug Ranch in Panhandle, Texas. And this is actually a spot that I showed in my last Route 66 vlog. And not only is the Bug Ranch itself uh, pretty interesting, but uh, the surrounding buildings uh, in that immediate area are really cool as well. So there's a lot to photograph there. And then if you head up the road just a little bit, uh, there's a really neat old motel sign. Um, probably one of my favorite images that I created from the entire trip. So the last one is the small town of McLean in Texas. And I did show this place in my Route 66 vlog, but since this is a video about my favorite, 
spots on the road, I figured I got to include it. Uh, just a really interesting old town with a lot of these nostalgic scenes uh, and it's really quiet as well. So uh, just a great place to kind of wander the streets for a morning uh, with camera in hand and just a ton of possibilities for images. And then it's also not that far up the highway from the last spot I mentioned, uh, Panhandle, Texas. So I hope this video helps anyone who is planning a trip in the near future. And as I mentioned, I would definitely recommend checking out some of these areas while they still exist. And as always, I wanna say thank you guys, appreciate the support, and we'll see you soon.